for the would-be astronomers or those who wonder what's out there, this one is for you. Um, astronomers have found a mystery dark object in a distant universe, and, and so I've got to get more information on this right now. Um, we have an expert who is zooming in with us. Um, tell me your name and who you're with. Hi, my name is uh, Chris Fosnacht, and I am a professor at the University of California at Davis. Thank you so much for your time and sharing your expertise with me right now. Um, <laughs> just break this down for us. This, this finding seems to be, well, it is out of this world, but uh, yes. break it down for us. <laughs> So, okay, so one of the great things about being an astronomer is you get to um, study like some of the really big questions, like what is the universe made of? And, uh, you know, this is what this result has to do with. So um, the astronomers have found that the universe is made up of, you know, there's two types of matter in the universe. There's what we call normal matter, which is the stuff that we're all familiar with. Mm -hmm. Things that are made out of um, the elements in the periodic table. And then there's some mysterious stuff called dark matter which uh, we don't know really much about at all, and it's 10 times as common, as, about 10 times as much mass in the universe as in dark matter compared to normal matter. And so we really want to find out uh, what, you know, what it is. And one way we can do that is by trying to learn about its properties. It's like if I gave you a brick of something and you were trying to figure out what the brick was made of, you'd say like, okay, is it light or is it heavy? You know, is it like styrofoam or is it like lead? And, and those kind of things. So if you get the properties of stuff, uh, then you can learn a little bit more about it. And in this case, the what we're trying to figure out is how common uh, little balls of dark matter are in the universe. And so there's some models of dark matter that predict that there should be huge numbers of these. So in mm. uh, a galaxy like our Milky Way, there should be thousands and thousands and thousands of these fairly low mass balls of dark matter. And there's other theories of dark matter where they say, no, 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 there should be many, many fewer of those. And so the whole point is to try to go out and to uh, sort of find examples of these low mass balls of dark matter and uh, you know, see what they're, how many there are, how common they are, and that will allow us to distinguish uh, you know, whether it's this model or that model. Um, and you know, the question is, dark matter we call it dark matter because it doesn't produce any light so how do you see this and the way we see this is by by gravity it turns out that einstein told us a long time ago that when light passes by a massive object the light can bend and what that does is if you have like a big galaxy and you're looking at it and there's another galaxy in the background what you see is a distorted bent view of that galaxy in the background and um, if you look at how it's distorted, you can learn something about how the mass is distributed in that foreground object. It's like looking at a, like a funhouse mirror where you get a distorted view mm -hmm, of, mm -hmm. of yourself. And if you know what you look like normally, you can kind of figure out the way that the mirror is distorting uh, the picture of you and learn about the mirror. And in this case, we look at a distorted image of a galaxy, and then we look for little wiggles in that distortion that are caused by this little ball of dark matter that happens to be out there. And so this was really cool because with this technique that involved a lot of really difficult uh, technological stuff, we were able to detect uh, a ball of dark matter that's about a million times the mass of the sun, which seems like a huge number, but is actually by a factor of 100, the smallest ball of dark matter we've ever detected before. And so that's really cool. It's only one, but uh, what, what this discovery shows us is that we have the ability to detect uh, more of these. And once we can detect a whole bunch, we can start saying, okay, are they common? Or are they rare? And that allows us to learn something about dark matter. Well, that was gonna be my next question. How rare <laughs> is a finding like this? This is rare. This is a lot of hard work. So what we did is we took um, telescopes, radio telescopes that are spread all over the surface of the earth and if you combine them all together, it gives you super detailed picture of these of these galaxies. It's like, I mean, the amount of detail, I think I worked this out correctly. It's like being able to see if you're in Chicago and you're looking at New York City and you can see something the size of a dime. Oh. So it's incredible amount of detail, a huge technological achievement to be able to combine these signals from these telescopes. And with that detail, we can see these tiny little wiggles and then the processing power 
the modeling that we have to do is all really complicated. And it's only now that we've gotten sort of the combination of both the technology and the analysis tools to be able to find this. So this is, yeah, this is an amazing achievement. I'm hoping it's just the first step because like I say, with only one, it's hard to tell, are they common or are they rare? But then like if we look at 10 or 100 objects and we see, did we tech? A whole bunch of these small things or do we detect only a few of them that's when we really start learning stuff yeah what would it say if you found a whole lot of them versus just few yeah so um right now astronomers well people much who are much smarter than i am have come up with this theory of like how we go from the very early universe to what we see today and they have a model of what dark matter is like and uh in that model that predicts that we should see huge numbers of these small balls of dark matter. And that's sort of what everyone's working on as the default. They say, okay, this model seems to explain everything we can see, but we can't actually test it because we can't, it's so hard to see these small balls of dark matter. And so um, I think what would be fun for me, because maybe I'm a little, um, you know, naughty in this way, is <laughs> I would hope that we would see many fewer of these uh, small, uh, you know, balls of dark matter, because that would mean that the sort of the default model that we have is wrong, and then that would be interesting. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I think it would be a nice uh, result if we detected lots of them too. Naughty in the astronomer world. I, I, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot that could be said about that. Listen, I have yes. a request to see the whiteboard behind you. Um, I appreciate oh. the fact that you are humble enough to say there are people <laughs> who are smarter than you. Uh, but mm. for those of us who don't understand even your world, uh, what is that yes. behind you? Oh, that's just, uh, you know, when I talk to students and I, I talk to them about the work that I do, um, I sort of like to draw pictures. I'm a very visual person. And mm -hmm. so I learn a lot by looking at pictures of things. And so when I try to explain things to people, I, um, I like to draw pictures of them. What were you explaining with that whiteboard? And show us a little bit more of it, if you don't mind. Oh, I don't know if it, it'll show up very well. It actually shows, um, so using this technique called gravitational lensing, uh -huh. um, which is how this bending of light uh, is what, you know, this is what we use to find this small ball of dark matter. But um, if you use it in a different way, um, you can also figure out how fast uh, the universe is expanding, which is actually a controversial thing right now. Ooh. And I was trying to explain um, how that worked using an analogy. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that was probably what I was trying to do with, with that particular picture. Very interesting. Okay, yeah. so um, I, I can just sense your passion for this particular issue. What are some other things um, that, that are in, in the research process right now uh, that you're hoping or, or really passionate to see come to fruition? Um, what are you, what, what, what's out there that we're, we're trying our best to uncover right now? Yeah, so, uh, well, there's tons of stuff. I mean, I think one really cool uh, part of astronomy that unfortunately I have nothing to do with, but I think that's really cool is, uh, you know, trying to find these planets going around stars that are not the sun. And that's something that in the last 10 years has got really gone from like almost nothing to now we know thousands of them. I think that's super cool. Um, you know, with the James Webb Space Telescope, we're able to look at galaxies that are very, very far away, which means we're looking very far back in time. Uh, because it takes light a very long time to get from those distant galaxies to us. Um, and then in the area that I um, work in, which is what we call cosmology, which is the study of the universe as a whole, the properties of the universe, you know, this this question that we were just talking about, you know, what is dark matter? What is, you know, what could it be? How, you know, can we, can we distinguish between these different models? That's a super um, important question and something that's driving a lot of research. And then the other one that I was mentioning is, you know, how fast the universe is expanding, which is, um, like I say, it's, a, it's controversial right now because we have two very, very qualified teams that uh, get answers that don't agree. And so what my colleagues and I are trying to do is to um, come up with a third way to see if we agree with either one side or the other side. Um, and I think those those are the like sort of the biggest questions or, you know, you know, how did the universe come to? Well, what's the universe made of? How fast is it expanding? How is it changing with time? Um, all of these things are really exciting. 